Joe Luis Barrow was born on May 13, 1914 in Alabama, the seven of eight children, a grandson of slaves, and one quarter Cherokee. When the boy was just two years old, his father, Monroe Barrow, was committed to an asylum. His mother, Lily, a religious woman, worked hard and raised her children to have manners. She married again to a widower named Pat Brooks with eight children of his own. Looking for a better life, Pat and Lily followed the paths of many Southern black families and moved their new family up to Detroit, where factory work was plentiful. Joe was a shy, quiet, and uninterested in school, and so was often mistaken for being dumb. A friend took him to Brewster's East Side Gymnasium and introduced him to the world of boxing. He fell in love with the sport. He soon shortened his name to Joe Luis so that his mother wouldn't find out, but she caught on eventually. At first, Mama looked unhappy, Luis recalled, but she could see that if any of her, us kids wanted to do something bad enough, she'd just try to see that we got a chance at it. No matter what you do, she said, remember, you're from a Christian family and always act that way. It was in the early days of the Depression, and his fa- family and stepfather and mother accepted the $7 checks Luis brought home. Luis's success in Detroit amateur boxing tournaments drew the attention of John Roxborough, who became his lifelong manager. Roxborough enlisted a friend from Chicago, Julian Black, who had some experience promoting fighters, and they hired Jack Blackburn as a trainer. Luis KO'd Jack Kraken in his first professional fight on July 4, 1934. Through the end of 1935, he earned $371,645 in professional purses, about three times the average annual salary at the time. The heavyweight championship was in reach as long as Luis's team could secure a fight with James Braddock, the title holder in 1935. The path required that Luis beat other contenders for the title to prove himself a worthy component and to demonstrate that his name could sell tickets. As boxing historian Herb Goldman described this period, Luis was going through the heavyweight division like Sherman through Georgia. He took Max Bayer in four rounds, Primo Cronara in six, former heavyweight champion Max Schmeling was the same path to reclaim his title. The Schmeling and Luis Camps agreed to about 1936, with a contract providing that they would not schedule any other fights for at least six months beforehand. In the interim, Luis took up golf. He remarkable record of victories had bred complacency. Luis had won his first 27 professional bouts, 23 by knockout, and was the 10-1 favorite in the fight against Schmeling. Yet Schmeling uh, stunned Luis in American fight, fighting fans with a knockout in the 12th round. An idol fell, White wrote the New York Post, and the crashing was so complete, so dreadful, and so totally unexpected that it broke the hearts of the Negroes of the world, Luis's friend Walter Smith would recall. Everyone was sick. Usually after Joe Luis got through fighting, everyone would be out in the streets, driving, honking their horns, and not only in Detroit, Philadelphia, New York, and Chicago, everywhere. Not the night. No, it was a sad night. It was like a funeral. After the first professional loss, Luis returned to training with a renewed purpose to defeat Sch- Schmeling. Schmeling and Braddock had arranged a title match, but as Adolf Hitler made headlines and threatened war, anti-Nazi groups and unions promised a boycott, scaring off the promoter. Braddock's management found they could make more money with less controversy by setting up a match with Luis. In fact, they would promise 10% of Luis's earnings for the next 10 years, a tidy sum. When a knockout in the eighth round, Luis became the new heavyweight champion of the world, but it was not until 1938's rematch against Schmeling when he quickly knocked out the German boxer that Luis truly felt like the undisputed champion. Luis held that the world title for 12 years through 24 bouts, longer than anyone before or since. When the United States entered World War II, Luis enlisted in the army. Might be a long, wrong, a lot wrong, wrong with America, but nothing Hitler can't fix. Uh, Hitler can fix. He said he fought the exhibition matches to raise money for the armed services and boost morale for the troops. He made donations to military relief funds. Historian Jeffrey Salmon says Joe Luis set a stunning example through his acts of patriotism, and even the South responded appreciatively. In 1949, Luis retired as the undefeated champion. He made a failed comeback attempt a few years later, in large part because of an enormous tax bill. He had always been generous to his family, paying for homes, cars, and education for his parents and siblings. He was monogamous to strangers, too, handing out $20 bills to anyone who asked. He invested in a number of businesses, Luis, uh, Joe Luis Restaurant, Joe Luis Insurance Company, a softball team called the Brown Bombers, Joe Luis Smelt Company, Joe Luis Punch, a drink, the Luis Power... PR firm, a horse farm, and more, all eventually failed. He gave liberally to the government as well, paying back the city of Detroit for any welfare money his family had received and donating huge sums earned from his exhibition boxing to the war effort. Despite all the money he had made, Luis left most, like most boxers, did little to protect himself financially and wound up owing a tremendous amount of back taxes. As he would later put it, when I was boxing, I made $5 million and wound up broke. 
I owe the government a million. If I was boxing today, I'd make 10 million and wind up broke. I owe the government 2 million. Towards the end of his life, Luis took a job as a greeter for a Las Vegas casino. The government agreed not to collect on the back taxes, and he lived comfortably among friends. He died on April 12, 1981. President Ronald Reagan allowed Luis to be buried at Arlington National Cemetery with military honors. At the end of his memoir, Luis wrote, I always, I almost always did exactly what I wanted to do. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick little video. As always, it was the history and film. It was great to be able to take and come out and pay my respects to such an iconic man in boxing history. Catch you guys in the next video. Have a great day, everyone.